Welcome to this month's edition of Focus on Health. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Brookmeyer, and today we'll be learning about Medicaid-managed care, and our special guest is Lauren Hart, a lead caseworker with Frederick County Health Department. Lauren, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, let's jump right in. What is Medicaid? Medicaid is a federal and state-funded program that provides um, health care to families, children, pregnant women, and single adults in Maryland. Okay, and since our topic is about Medicaid managed care, what is Medicaid managed care? Uh, Medicaid managed care is a program that provides health care services to Medicaid recipients. Basically, it's the insurance company for uh, Medicaid um, enrollees. Um, health Choice oversees the managed care organizations. Okay, all right. So who is eligible for Health Choice then? Um, most Medicaid enrollees are eligible for Health Choice services that are enrolled. Okay, um, and so if they're eligible for it, then do they have to do something special or additional to actually enroll in a managed care plan or managed care insurance company? Once they have um, been approved for Medicaid, they do have to contact Health Choice, which is um, the enrollment line is 1-800-977-7388 and they will pick a primary care physician in their MCO and enroll over the phone then. Okay, all right. So if someone's enrolled in an MCO, or I guess that's the shorthand for managed care organization, so say someone enrolls in a managed care organization and then they want to change it for a number of reasons, can they do that? They can. Um, once they have been enrolled, they do have 90 days to make a change to their MCO selection. They um, once they have made that selection, they have to stay in it. They do then have once a year, which is their annual right to change, which is basically their anniversary date of becoming eligible for Medicaid that they can change their MCO again. Okay, all right. So you've provided us a lot of good information about uh, Medicaid. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Uh, just once again, the phone number to enroll is 1-800-977-7388. Okay. Very good. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And now please stay tuned for this month's Medical Myths. Hi, I'm Tracy and this is Catherine. We are Frederick County 911 dispatchers and we're here to tell you what to expect when dialing 911. We're on the line to listen and we also have important instructions to give you. Your 911 operator needs to get essential information from you as quickly as possible by asking the following questions in this order. What is the address of the emergency so we can send the right help to the right location? What is the phone number you're calling from? If the line disconnects, we may need to call you back. What is your name so we can address you properly? And tell me exactly what happened. Asking these questions allows operators to start dispatch to emergencies quickly. Your 911 operator is often working closely with one or more dispatchers, obtaining important information which is relayed to responders who are on the way to your location while you are still on the phone. This process is repeated on each call to ensure responders get to each emergency as quickly and safely as possible with the right information to provide the best service they can. Law enforcement, fire and rescue, and other responders rely on 911 operators and dispatchers to obtain specific information that varies with each type of call. Sometimes it may seem as though your 911 operator is asking a series of unnecessary questions, but in fact this information is vital for getting the right help sent to the right place. Often help is already on the way while your 911 operator is talking to you. While emergency crews are responding, dispatchers continue to provide them with updated information gathered by your 911 operator. Also, your 911 operator may be able to provide you with important life-saving direction, from how to safely exit a building on fire to CPR instruction, providing important information for staying safe and out of danger during a vehicle accident, as well as helping a caller deliver a baby. For more information, visit frederickcountymd.gov slash 911 or call the non-emergency number at 301-600-1603. The Frederick County Department of Aging is proud to announce a new initiative that is designed to streamline the application process for several benefit programs that assist older adults and persons with disabilities. 
This information and assistance event is a partnership of the Frederick County Department of Aging, the Maryland Food Bank, and the Frederick County Department of Social Services. One day per month at each of the county's senior centers, the Department of Aging will host representatives to assist with the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program application, formerly known as Food Stamps, and the Energy Assistance application. Also on hand will be the Senior Health Insurance Program Coordinator who will answer Medicare questions and screen for Medicare subsidy programs. These events will begin at 10 a.m. and take place at the Frederick, Urbana, Emmitsburg, and Brunswick Senior Centers. Appointments are encouraged. Walk-ins are welcome. For more information to make an appointment or in case of inclement weather, please call the Frederick County Department of Aging at 301-600-3520. And now here's this month's medical myth. This month, I'll talk about myths related to New Year's resolutions. A common myth related to New Year's resolutions is that they don't work. Well, that is partly true. For all resolutions, if you are committed to taking action and develop a reasonable plan with realistic goals, then you will be more likely to be successful. A common resolution is to exercise more. Well, that is a great goal. But getting started may be overwhelming for someone who has an image of a spandex-wearing, muscled person spending hours each night at the gym. Setting realistic goals is key. You may eventually get to that image that you have, but to be successful, you may need to start out with a smaller and more attainable goal, like five minutes of fast walking, or five minutes at lunch, or going up and down stairs at work. A second myth, common myth that I hear around New Year's is a belief that going on a crash diet will be the best way to get to one's target weight. It's natural for anyone trying to lose weight to want to lose it very quickly, but evidence shows that people who lose weight gradually and steadily, that's about one to two pounds a week, are more successful at keeping the weight off. Healthy weight loss isn't just about a diet or a program. It's about an ongoing lifestyle that includes long-term changes in daily eating and exercise habits. To lose weight, you must use up more calories than you take in. Since one pound equals 3,500 calories, you need to reduce your caloric intake by 500 to 1,000 calories per day to lose about one to two pounds a week. Once you've achieved a healthy weight by relying on healthful eating and physical activity most days of the week, that's about 60 to 90 minutes of moderate intensity, you are more likely to be successful at keeping the weight off over the long term. Losing weight takes more than desire. It takes commitment and a well thought out plan. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to getting started. Step one, make a commitment. Step two, take stock of where you are. Step three, set realistic goals. Step four, identify resources for information and support. And then step five, continually check in with yourself to monitor your progress. One of the most common myths spread by smokers is that they can't quit. Well, the truth is that many ex-smokers used to believe the same thing. And then they tried, and then they tried and tried until they were eventually able to be smoke-free for longer than they had been smoking. Since 2002, there are more ex-smokers than current smokers. You can be one too. Oh, and for those of you who say, I tried to quit before, but just went back to smoking, you are actually in a good position to be successful in the future. The experience that you had works in your favor. You can make your 2015 smoke-free and tobacco-free. There are free classes in Frederick with free nicotine replacement treatment. There is also a free 1-800-QUIT-NOW phone resource and support system, and now there's also a text messaging support system to help you be successful in following through with your resolution to kick the habit. That's this month's Medical Myths. And now, here is this month's health tip with Amber Nally. Hello, this is Amber Nally, health educator with the Frederick County Health Department. This month's health tip is brought to you by the Tobacco-Free Frederick Program of the Behavioral Health Services Division. The new year means new resolutions. If you are a tobacco user, this is the perfect time to set your goal to be smoke-free in 2016. Tobacco use, including cigars and smokeless tobacco, remains the single most preventable cause of death and premature death in the United States. Despite this, more than 45 million Americans continue to use tobacco. According to the CDC, cigarette smoking is estimated to cause 480,000 deaths annually including deaths from secondhand smoke exposure. On average, adult smokers die 10 years earlier than non-smokers. 
In Frederick County, approximately 12.1% of adults and 9.2% of youth were current tobacco smokers in 2010. While these numbers have decreased over previous years, far too many of our family members, children, friends, and coworkers currently use tobacco. Set your resolution now. Prepare and commit to quit smoking in 2016. Start by talking to your doctor or healthcare provider about quitting tobacco. Think about your environment and what you need to change. Many people find it helpful to take action to prepare before they quit. This can include removing tobacco products and ashtrays from your home and work, making your home a smoke-free environment, cleaning your car of any tobacco products or smoke smell, creating a new daily routine that doesn't include tobacco, and developing a quit plan. Research shows that individuals who receive support are more likely to be successful in quitting. So when you are ready to quit, reach out to one of the many effective and free cessation programs available. The Frederick County Health Department provides group and individual counseling, Frederick Memorial Hospital holds monthly group classes, and the state quit line 1-800-QUIT-NOW is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All of these services provide free advice, support, and nicotine replacement therapies such as gum, patches, and lozenges. Tobacco is very addictive and can make quitting challenging. Most people make multiple attempts, but don't give up. Start now and be smoke-free in 2016. Find Tobacco Free Frederick on Facebook or call the Frederick County Health Department at 301-600-3357 for more information about the free tobacco cessation programs available to you. Thanks for tuning in to this month's Health Tip. And thank you for joining us for this month's edition of Focus on Health. Please join us next month. Transit services of Frederick County. With rising gas prices, transit is a less expensive way to work or school. Most commuter bus routes run every 30 minutes during weekday morning and afternoon rush hours. Bus stops are within a quarter mile of most businesses in downtown Frederick. Transit offers shuttles to Thurmont, Emmitsburg, Brunswick, Jefferson, Spring Ridge, and Route 85, or take a shuttle to the Mark train for an easy commute. Find out what nearly one million passengers already know. Transit connects people and places. Did you know that all of Frederick County's mixed recyclables go to a materials recovery facility to be sorted? For this to happen, your recyclables need to be placed into a cart or bin loose, not in bags. Trash bags are not recyclable, and materials in bags are difficult to open at the sorting center and are not accepted. The only exception to this rule are recyclable plastic bags, like grocery store bags, which do need to be gathered together inside one bag so that they don't get caught in the sorting facility's machinery. Also, shredded paper should be placed inside a paper bag or cardboard box so that it can be collected and sorted properly. Thank you for helping to make recycling work better for our community. And remember, please don't bag your mixed recyclables. More information on our recycling program can be found online, in our mobile app, or by calling our office. Recycle more, waste less. Get connected, get answers. Do you need help with things like finding a job or a doctor, getting health insurance, finding affordable childcare or securing housing? Maybe you could use some help with solving a problem or need someone to listen. 211 Maryland can assist you with these and many other issues. 211 offers free and confidential information and referral services 24 hours a day, seven days a week and has access to 150 languages for non-English speakers. Learn more by visiting www.211md.org. Unable to attend a county meeting? No problem. Watch live and archived broadcasts online. Just visit frederickcountymd.gov backslash FCGTV and then click the live stream or video archives link.